What's up divas and what's up divos? It is of course Real Talk Wednesday with your girl April. So of course as you guys already know that every Wednesday there is a new Real Talk episode with emails from my ladies or gents, divas and divos here on the YT who need some advice, personal opinions, hash it out, what have you. So of course I'm going to be doing three as long as I don't die from heat right now um, because sitting in front of the lights is kind of hot. So in case you're wondering, yes, I did change my scenery back to where it was and I will be honest and tell you the reason why is because where I'm sitting at is actually in front of my window where it gives me the best natural lighting. I don't have to have all these lights glaring on me. I don't have to tweak the video with the proper editing software or just proper coloring. It takes me much longer to edit a video when I am somewhere else in my bedroom opposed to right here in front of the natural light. So I will be back and forth. Most of my videos probably be back here again um, only because of the natural lighting and I will do like some of my videos in the other portion of my room as well as here. So in case you're wondering, yes, this gives me like the best natural lighting. So yeah. So as for the hair, this is actually hair by Lily Beauty Hair and this is an Ally Express store and this is some kinky curly hair. Yes, very kinky, but very, very nice. Um, I will say this is three full bundles of 16 inches and a 14 inch closure. I will be honest and say I never was one for the kinky curly look because it's so wild, but it's so in and I've grown to love it a lot and especially because of my natural hair sisters. So being that my hair will never be this texture of this type of curl pattern, I went ahead and made me a unit and added some color to it with different dimensions of different color developers and bleaches and such so I will have the video posted up on that if not this week next week I'm really busy this week I have a lot of custom units that I need to get out make for my customers so that is taking a lot of my time out to edit videos but anyway other than that um, that's about it so let's get on to this real talk if you want a real talk made about yourself you can always go ahead and send me an email at muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com and make sure to put it in the subject line real talk if you want to change the name of yourself in the in the actual email that's perfect so that way i don't have to think of a name for you so if your name is really janice but you you want your name to be mika or whatever go ahead and just say you know i already changed the name so that way it makes it a whole lot easier and i don't have to sit here and think of names because i'm probably going to run out of ideas after a while. So yeah, let's get into this real talk. Okay, you guys, so this one is going to be uh, a good one and basically I'm um, already changed the name hey April my name is Kay already changed the name for you and I'm having a very a very difficult time at home I'm 24 years old and since I could remember home is not where my heart is I've always been the black sheep of my family and I've become more and more of a shadow I can't I can't state my opinions or facts to my family without being judged for example, my sister is getting married in a couple of months, and for her wedding, she wants me to wear faux locks. I've thought about getting dreadlocks before, but just did not have the money for it. Now that I have a job, I'm considering getting dreadlocks, but instead of going through the long process, I want to get human hair lock extensions. Now, I understand the spiritual and natural aspects of growing out your own dreadlocks, but I've already done that grow out process with just my hair alone. I do not want to deal with the long process of dread, so I decided to go with dreadlock extensions. After making my decision, I consulted with my sister, which I barely do, just to see her input. I told her if I decided to get these extensions, please do not judge the decision I make. She responded by saying, I'm going to judge you because lock extensions are fake. One thing I ask my family to do is be supportive in every decision I make, just like I do for them, and I seem to still get the end of the stick. My family judged me on my grades in college and even the teaching job I was just offered. Since I'm a college graduate, I have a 3.8 GPA and have made the dean's list twice. I thought maybe that would be enough. Wrong. They tell me to do better, get better grades, and make better choices. I don't know what else to do. I feel mentally and physically drained every day and I'm ready to move out. My new teaching job does not start until the end of August and I have no choice but to stay at home until I'm financially stable. Please, April, help me. Please, April, help me. I'm become, becoming more and more sleep deprived and my anxiety is turning into depression. I've had depression 
PTSD in the past, which my family completely ignored, and I had to work on the situation by myself because my family told me to get over it. I don't know what else to do. My family is spiritually and mentally killing me. Thanks for reading. Love you. Well, Kay, let's see here. Now, first of all, Kay, your sister is getting married, and it does state that she did want you to wear faux locks for her wedding. Now, when you tell her you're going to get some faux dreadlocks, she's going to judge you because they're fake. It is what it is. Either she does or she doesn't. You know, sometimes in the world, it seems like it's so hard to please those that are closest to us by blood. It seems like we just go all out of our way to try to make our family members happy. Sometimes even friends, too. But more or less, it seems like we go all out of our ways to make family members happy, pleased with us pleased with what they do, just satisfied and happy in general. And sometimes making other people happy does not make us happy. Now, as for her wedding, I'm going to tell you this. If this is what she asked you for and now you're getting it and she's saying she's going to judge you, this is what I would do, Kay. Not to be spiteful, but get the dreadlocks because that is what you want to do. I'm going to be honest and tell you, I'm not a huge fan of growing my hair out into dreadlocks and that long journey of dreadlock process. That's just too much. Me, I'm the type of person, I want it done and I want it right about now. And I really do think like the fake dreadlocks are really like the end thing. They look to me, this is just my opinion. So for anyone who does have dreads, don't take as offense. I just like the fake dreads better. They look a lot neater to me. Um, and for one, for a person like myself, they're a whole lot better to maintain. If I'm done with them, all I need to do is take them out. So if that's what you want, trust me, you're not the only one out here that's rocking fake dreadlocks. Well, nowadays, with the way things are, you wouldn't even be able to tell they were fake. This is what she asked you to do for her wedding. I really don't think it's her place to tell you what to wear in your head or what not to wear in your head. Fake hair is an accessory. I could care less if people think it's fake. So is people's attitudes. So is people's personalities. So are people. I'd rather have fake hair than a fake ass friend or a fake ass relative. That's just my that's just my bottom line. However, you got a 3.8 GPA, you've been on a Dean's list twice. Kudos to you because some people can't get on a Dean's list at all or can't get any type of nice score on a GPA. So for you to be so depressed about what you're doing, I would be so happy and proud of myself. You've got a teaching job. And of course, everybody, every parent wants their child to do better. They always want and we always want them to exceed their limits. That's, that's a given. I mean, there may be some parents that don't feel that way and they just settle for whatever their kids may give them. But a lot of parents want their children to exceed. And when you do good, they want you to do better. And when you do better, they want you to be the best. Okay? So there's nothing wrong with them feeling like, you know what? Okay, we want you to be the best you can be. We want you to do better at everything you put your mind to. Keep your focus. Stay positive. Do what you need to do. Make good decisions. That's just a parent talking. That's how we think. That's how we want our children to be. We always want our children to be better than what we are. If I was the president of the United States, I would want my kids to be better than what I am. Do better than me. Even if I was the president of the United States, still do better than me. I mean, damn, that's a good ass job. But I'm still expecting you to do better than me because as a parent, I want my kids to succeed so they don't have to know the struggle. They don't have to go through what I've gone through. And I just want them to be the best at anything that they choose. So, with that being said, I wouldn't let what they're coming at you get you so down. Sometimes with parents, it's hard to come back or combat with them. You know, they feel that they're always right. Trust me, I'm a parent of five kids. So, I always feel like I'm right and I'll be the first to tell you I feel like I know everything when it comes to my kids and when I'm telling them something whatever I say goes what you're talking about you really don't know I know what I'm talking about but we just expect a lot and sometimes as parents we can expect too much and it can drive a person insane so if you're feeling that you're doing good and what you've accomplished is good for you then know in your heart that it's good for you and I'm pretty sure that your parents are really proud of you really really proud of you however we all want to see our kids succeed and be better than everyone else and that's just as a parent but as far as your sister and judging you some people judge you because they can't do the things that you can do maybe she wants to wear fake, fake dreadlocks but she might be really really afraid to because she's afraid of what people may think and people may judge her 
people that judge other people really don't have a lot to judge them on. They see the outer shell of the person. You can see me and be like, oh, a lot of people, you know, like my friend Nicole, she says that when people first meet me, just because of the way I look and I carry myself, they may think that I'm bougie. And when you get to know me or you just start talking to me, oh, wow, she really cool. Because I'm a cool down to earth person, so you're judging me from my looks. And you're just judging me because of how I appear to you. But in reality, I'm like a down cool chick. I'm a down to earth person. So when she came out right and said to you, I'm going to judge you because they're fake locks. Why did she want you to wear them to her wedding then in the first damn place? You need to ask yourself that, okay? And you need to ask her that. You were the one that asked me to wear them for your wedding. To be part of your wedding party, you wanted me to wear fake dreadlocks. And now that I'm telling you to get, I'm going to get some, you're telling me you're going to judge me. It's either it is or it isn't. You do or you don't. You cannot make everybody happy in the world. I'll tell you what. I've done try, I'm, I'm done trying to make everybody happy and please everybody in the world. You know what I mean? All the shady bullshit that I see and people don't think that I know about it and, and other shit. I can't appease you. I'm not going to go all out of my way to make you happy. If you're not happy with what I'm doing for you or how I'm coming at you or just me being your friend or whatever, then you're just not happy with yourself. And there's more to it than what I see, okay? So there probably is a little bit more to it than what you see because if she's asking you to wear these fake dreadlocks and now she's judging you, girl, please. Don't worry about making her happy. Come to the wedding. Be prepared. Be neat. Be devilicious. Be pretty. Be courteous. And be positive. That's all you can do. You cannot make everybody happy. And no, regardless, you can make them happy with one thing, but they are going to nitpick at a whole bunch of other shit. They'll be happy with this one thing, and then tomorrow they'll be, I'm not happy, and I don't like how you did this. And I don't like how you put that nail polish on, and I don't like how your curl pattern was. I don't like the way the dreads was tied at the end. It don't matter what you do. You cannot please everybody. And life is just way, way, way too short to try to please everybody. in it. I'm over that shit. Like, seriously over it. I'm always trying to make everybody else happy, but then when it's April's turn... April don't, you know what I'm saying? Nobody ain't trying to make me happy like that. Nobody ain't going all out. You got to ask yourself, are you, are these people going all out for me as I'm trying to satisfy their needs and make them happy? What are they doing for me? They're shooting me down. They're criticizing me. They're judging me. They're making me get upset. They're depressing me. You got to evaluate the situation. And yeah, you may have to stay into your parents' home until you get on your feet and stable with your job. But you know what? It's only a short time. And sometimes what you need to do instead of keeping everything bottled up inside, okay, is have a nice family talk, a nice sit down. Nobody's yelling at one another. Nobody's in a bad mood. Nobody's being disrespectful. We are going to hash it out as adults do and let them know, hey mom, hey dad, hey brother, hey sister. I am so happy in my journeys in life and I feel like I've accomplished so much and this is not the end of what I accomplished, but I'm happy and I would just appreciate it if you would be happy for me instead of judging me all the time. Bottom line, you don't have to come at them with a negative vibe, with a negative attitude, with any type of negative feelings or thoughts. Let them know your real feeling and how you feel. Home sometimes ain't where the heart is always. Trust me, I know this. But sometimes you got to make yourself happy and forget everybody else. Because if you don't, girlfriend, you are going to go fucking crazy and you're going to let everybody else drive you crazy while they over there in la-la land living it up, happy as can be, and you sitting in the room, in a padded room, rocking, shaking back and forth, or pulling your hair out because you didn't let everybody stress you the hell out. I have let my son, my oldest son, stress me out enough. He is going to be 23 years old next Sunday. The 23rd of August and I have done more than enough for him I've given him love I've given him shelter I've given him everything a parent is supposed to give him and then some okay I've bought him cars I paid for rent bought him furniture I've done a lot of stuff and it's to the point where you know what you can't please everybody because no matter how much I give and give and give you you're never going to be happy and so I've come to terms with it 
he's a little flaky and he needs to figure himself out first and then when he does that maybe he could be a lot more respectable for me and to me and then therefore he could be happy within himself and he don't have to be so rude and nasty to me as a person you know what i'm saying so i finally come to terms with that i've been on um I've been talking to my friends, you know, sometimes I will cry, like, you know, I miss him, I wish he wasn't like this to me, you know, and things like that, but now I'm over it, you know, he's 23 years old, you grown, if you can't make it out there in the own world and with your kid and your girlfriend, then I don't know what to tell you, but you can't always be around me, and I've given you food for thought enough to where, you know what, you're going to either succeed or not, so I am not concerned with making my son happy anymore, because he does not make me happy. And it is time for me to be happy. So therefore, you're on one side of the world on the east and I'm on the west. And I like it like that because we are a world apart. And I don't have to be bothered with your chaos, foolishness, and nonsense. Now don't get me wrong, I love him and I always love him because that is my baby. That's my son. But he needs to grow up and he needs to love himself and be happy within himself before anybody else can make him happy. So don't keep thinking that you got to keep appeasing everybody and pleasing them. You know, it starts within you. Make sure that you're the one that's happy first. Because ain't nobody else going to worry about your happiness besides you. So let Kay know what you feel. And get them fake dreadlocks, girl, please. There's too many different hairstyles to be confined to one hairstyle. So get them hair, that hairstyle and rock on. Let Kay know what y'all think. And leave your comments below. Okay, so on to the next. <laughs> Okay. Dear April, a couple months ago I had an aunt that had planned to come and visit me and my mother all the way from New York. A few weeks before the visit, I kept trying to insinuate that we really weren't ready for her visit due to funds and other things. I also worked a very long and stressful job after working 40 to 60 hours a week every single day with no days off. I've been going through a very sudden breakup between me and my boyfriend and was not handling it that well. Also, each time I tried to convince her to maybe try to reschedule the visit, she told me she was coming no matter what. When it came down to it, I ended up having a nervous breakdown the closer it got to the day for her to come and visit, and I had to admit myself into a psychiatric care. I told her she could still come, but that I would not be part of the visit and that she would just be visiting with my mom. She got very upset and canceled the trip. I later found out that she was very mad at me for having her to cancel the trip and having to pay the fees due to her canceling the trip. She has never once asked about how I was doing or why I had to go into a mental institute for one week. It's like she's only cared about her money and that she, she only, it's like she only cared about the, her money that she lost. I never once told her that she did not have to come. I just told her that I would not be part of the visit due to my mental state. We have not spoken since then and she kind of blows me off as if I don't exist. When I tried to text her off my mom, when I try to text her or my mom tries to explain the situation to her, she does not care. She just brings up the money that she lost because of the trip. I really just want to end this relationship, but I know that she is family. So what should I do? So we're going to call her Carolyn because she didn't give me a name. So Carolyn, so your aunt wanted to come visit you, but you know, you guys weren't ready for her. You basically, it wasn't good timing and you tried to explain this to her on several occasions, but she just didn't get it. So because she just didn't get it and you ended up in mental care, she canceled her trip and now she's pissed off because she had to pay, she lost money out. And it probably was plane ticket and things or whatever. Um, but here's the thing, Carolyn. That's nobody's fault but hers. Okay? Nobody's fault but her own damn fault. You already advised her on several different occasions. It's not good timing. If you tell me that it's not good timing for me to come across the country or wherever to visit with you, my black ass ain't gonna come. I'm not about to waste my money to come see you and you really don't wanna be bothered with me like that. And it may not even be that you really don't wanna be bothered with me like that, but it's just not good timing. So basically, my presence is really not needed there at the moment. So I'm not gonna make a trip. I'm not gonna keep planning for this trip Life goes on. There are, and there's other times when I could come out there and visit you and my sister and my nieces and nephews or whoever. You know what I mean? So for her to get upset with anybody, she should get upset with herself, okay? Because it was nobody's fault but her own. If you gonna continue to make the plane ticket and pay the money, and we already said that it's not a good time 
then who the fuck are you going to blame but yourself? You can't get mad with me because I ended up having a nervous breakdown and then on top of that, you're not even concerned about my well-being, okay? I did say you can still come, but I'm not going to be part of the visit because I'm where I'm at. Me, personally, this is what I... And my wig is itching, okay? Me, personally, this is what I would have done. If I was the aunt and I already went ahead and made the plans or whatever to come there, but you told me I'm not going to be a part of it because I'm in a situation right now and because of my health, you know what I would have done? I would have still came and I would have made sure to come visit you and make sure that you as a person were all right. I wouldn't have canceled the trip even though you already told me not to bring my black ass there, but I still am like, I'm going, I'm I'm buying these plane tickets and my ass is on that fucking plane and I'm out, okay? Even though you told me it's not a good timing. It's not a good timing. It's not a good timing. You told me this more than one occasion and I'm still like, listen, adamant about I'm going, okay? You know what? I would have went. And then it would have been more of an importance to me to go because here's my niece. She's in a mental ward and she's not doing that great. Now I definitely have to go. I have to make sure that my sister, my niece's mother is okay because she could be going through something and this could be affecting her. I had to go and make sure that my family is okay and make sure that they're all right and that she's okay and see what happened. Not to be nosy, but out of concern. I'm going to be concerned now. You already didn't want my ass there, but now at least let me come there and be of some help. You know, be of some help. What can I do? What can I do to make the situation better for you what can I do to lighten the load? What can I do to help you get out of here? Not, oh, I don't want to speak to you because I lost my money type shit. You already went through some shit. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You want to end a relationship with her? First of all, y'all not even in a relationship. She's just your relative. And I will tell you, sometimes they, they, they say blood is thicker than water. No, the fuck is not, okay? Blood can be thicker than water in reality. In reality, it is. But your relatives be the ones that get you all the fucking time. They will shoot you down. So it's like, this is my friend. But we closer than you and me. And we, we related. Just because you related don't mean that you got to be like this. And it got to be like this. And it is like this. Nah, that shit could be like this. Deuces, peace. Okay? And um, listen, I have enough family members. I don't speak to every last one of them. I just don't, okay? Because I am not chill with them. I'm not good with them. It's not that we have any kind of animosity towards each other, but you are who you are, and I am who I am, and I don't rock with you like that. I can see through all the bullshit, and therefore, I don't want to be bothered with the shit. And then I got my friend over here in Arizona who is like this with me, okay? And me and her are like this. We are the same. We are closer than me and some of my relatives have ever been, okay? So, it's nice that if you can get together as a family, but family sometimes be the ones that do your ass in. Trust and believe I've had that situation. I just told you guys about my son, okay? And I've had my other situations, you know what I mean? I am the oldest. I have two brothers and a sister. I'm the oldest. And out of my two brothers, my oldest brother, me and him don't speak, um... When I say oldest, he's not older than me, but he's the second oldest. Me and him don't speak. And my, my two brothers are from my father's side. So me and my, my first brother, we don't speak to each other um, because he has his issues. And, you know, he's gay and it has nothing to do with him being gay because I love gay people. They're people. I don't, I don't put a title on them. They're, you're a person. But he's, he, um, he, this is what he is. And he, he thinks that he can read people's minds. Okay, so he thinks he's a psychic, okay, and he thinks he was possessed, okay, and he has bipolar, all right, and he likes to disrespect my father. So when he calls me up and I have to call him out on his shit, I said, first of all, Jonathan, I said, you're gay, you're a psychic, you were possessed, and you're bipolar. How's that working out for you, okay, because you all of those four things wrapped in fucking one. What the hell is wrong with you? So he don't really care for me too much because I'm I'm just straightforward. I'm no holds barred. I'm gonna tell you how I feel. I don't care if he's gay. That's cool. We can go we can we can do things together. You like what I fucking like. But it ain't even that. It's the whole point of you're a psychic, 
you you were possessed. He said he was possessed. Then he posted a video on YouTube about the shit. Okay, and he's bipolar. He takes medication. I don't even care if you're bipolar. Take your medication and you're fine. But the other two, you're psychic and you're pos you were possessed. I can deal without. So t shit like that, I don't even bother with because it's just it's just too much to handle like seriously so family members really don't always mean that they're real family you know and that's my brother then i have my other brother who i always post on my instagram page and we look just alike and that's that's my baby we are like this i love him to pieces i love my other brother but this one isn't crazy he's got a good head on his shoulders he has a great job he's a very positive person he's so positive you know what i mean so I can deal with that. But all the extra shit, like, I can't deal with. I have my favorite cousin, Kenya, who is, like, my sister. She is, like, my sister. And then we have our other cousins that we just don't fucking deal with. Because you're just the ratchet ones. And you have that ratchet shit going on in your ratchet-ass life that I don't want to deal with. And you're a user. So, therefore, family don't always have to be family. You can find someone that's your best friend and be your family. They could be, like, your family. So... Carolyn, as far as your aunt, if she wants to be set in her ways and if she's so worried about her money, please. It is what it is. You win some, you lose some. Nobody told her to make the flight. You already told her in advance it's not good timing. So to stray yourself away from all that bullshit, you don't need no extra nonsense in your life, no extra drama. It's drama free. No shade, no none of that shit. Leave her alone because as long as you feed into her bullshit with the money, she's just going to continue on. Sometimes you got to leave people the hell alone so that they can snap back into reality and realize it ain't all about you. It's really not all about you. You know what I'm saying? And I have to feel that way too about certain situations. Like really, it ain't all about you. Stop thinking that everybody's always worried about what you're doing and what you got going on. I don't even give a fuck. Okay? This is my whole fucking concept. My whole shit. My agenda for every day. I'm not worried about you. If you think that I'm worried about what you're doing and how you're doing it, stop it. Because I'm not worried about you. I don't give a fuck about what you're doing. I got my own shit over here and my own shit to run. So don't allow, don't allow your aunt to get you in that freaking phase, that, that body where you are upset about how she feels. She lost her money. That's nobody's fault but her own. She can still use her plane ticket. It happens all the time. But nobody told her to make the flight. So I wouldn't even let it bother me. Family members will do you in. They would stab you in the back and take the fucking knife out and then be like, would you like me to butter your bread with this? Okay. Hmm. For real. So... Leave Carolyn your advice down below. And so the last real talk, and this is a long one. So I'm going to read as fast as I can. Dear Miss Muffin is my lovers. When I first met my husband, I was only a year out of a very violent relationship. In contrast, our relationship was wonderful and I was very much in love with him. He promised to love, care, and protect and provide for me and my children. I worked two full jobs to pay for our wedding. I purchased the equipment he needed to start our small business because he couldn't legally work due to his immigrant status. I did everything I could to help him achieve his dreams of being able to work for himself and provide us with the best life he could. I felt so blessed to have him, and the thought of us ever separating never crossed my mind. In December of 2014, he received his green card. In January, there was a drastic change in his behavior. He suddenly moved himself into our living room, stopped communicating with me. All affection ceased. I attempted to have several conversations with him about this matter, but I barely received a response. Becoming desperate, I would plead with him to speak with me and my children. I began asking him what was wrong with me that he couldn't sleep in our bed or make love to me anymore. I would even asked if there was someone else, which he denied every time. His response would be that all he does is work and he wasn't looking up, no, he wasn't looking upon nobody. And now he had no time for that. Things had gotten so bad that he barely, he rarely came home. When he did, he refused to eat what I would cook. Instead, he would make, he made a deliberate point to prepare meals for himself and our chihuahua. The lack of affection progressed. He had also completely stopped supporting me financially. 
In April, I felt hopeful when he told me that he was willing to try and work things out. However, by the middle of June, things regressed to the point of him staying out all night again. I discovered that he had even purchased an additional phone. It's my belief that this was done to hide certain details of his life from me. This caused me extreme emotional distress. I didn't know how I could continue with him the way things were. The true nightmare began in August when I discovered that I was pregnant with our daughter. The husband that I loved so dearly had evolved into someone I had no longer knew. He said things like he didn't love me, he no longer needed me, he had it gotten through, and I'm straight now. I asked him if I asked him if what he was saying was true, and he said, Yeah, yeah, man, me don't need oh, okay. Gosh, look, look. Yeah, man, me don't have to kiss anyone's ass anymore. Me have me card. I could do nothing but cry. I started contacting attorneys. I felt so helpless after giving this man seven years of my life only to find out that I was being used. From that point on, it became apparent to everything that he did was in a deliberate effort to hurt, abuse, and humiliate me. He refused to acknowledge our unborn child as his and told our friends and family that I was unfaithful. He refused to even look at the sonograms. Because I worked for the city school district, I was out of work for the summer. He refused to pay any household bills or purchase food for our family. By November, I was distraught with my situation that I reached out to the social worker at my doctor's office. My blood pressure was so high and uncontrollable from the stress that I was enduring that I needed to be hospitalized. Both the lives of me and my baby were in danger. Over a period of six weeks, he only came to visit me twice. Our child was born prematurely at only 33 weeks. He did not see our once... He did not see her once while she was in the NICU, NIC unit, excuse me. After these series of events, I knew I needed to escape this marriage. I chose to speak and retain legal help. I was served with divorce paperwork approximately a week later. Further complicating the situation, on February 6th, I was contacted by Ms. Danielle Duncan. She informed me of their four-year affair. She explained how she shared my most intimate secret. She explained how he shared my most intimate secrets with her. He told her about the molestation of my daughters. He said he was no longer going to support me. He was instead supporting her and her children. He purchased her books and bought her children's school clothes. He financed her Christmas. Instead of spending holidays with his own family, he had, spend it, he had been spending them with her. She further told me that she had been selling, oh, she further told me that he had been selling illegal drugs, specifically marijuana, out of her home. She stated that he had recorded me on several occasions crying and telling him I loved him and begging him to talk to me. He played these recordings for her. Mrs. Duncan told me that she is three months pregnant with his child. I had the phone on speaker for five hours when Devin, with Devin listening to our conversation. He denied some of our accusations. I asked her how she could be with him knowing he was married for four years. She stated that she waited for him because she loved him. He promised her that once he got his conditions removed and received his green card that he would leave me for her. After receiving this information, I emotionally and mentally reached a dark, very dark place. It became very difficult to cope and I could not seem to stop the pain that I was feeling. I became so depressed that I even contemplated taking my own life. I loved my husband even though he hurt me in ways that I have never imagined possible. Devin is still staying in our home. He does not acknowledge anyone in our home or our family, not even his own child. I do my best to ignore his behavior, but he continues to make to have relationships with other women blatantly. He speaks to them in front of me and even has them pick him up from our house. This has caused me extreme pain and trauma. My doctor has diagnosed me with severe depression. I struggle on some days to even get out of bed. This depression is delib dilapidating. Miss Muffins, what else should I do? I can't take this. Mookie. Okay, so, damn. So this was a long one, but bottom line is, Mookie here basically met up with this guy after getting out of a violent relationship. Come to find out the guy was an illegal here. He needed a green card. He married her. He promised her the fucking world, basically. That's all we're going to say. He promised her the world. She worked two jobs to buy stuff for their wedding and to help him start his own business. And once this motherfucker got his green card, he act like he don't know nobody. He acting real shady like he don't really know nobody. Like on some real disrespectful type shit. And now you got somebody else pregnant. You over there telling this next bitch all my business. How I'm pouring out my heart to you. And how you're not going to take care of me, our child, pay no bills. And you're not supporting me and this family. And you don't even want to be around me. And that basically you think that I'm a fucking joke. Okay? Because this is what it all boils down to. This motherfucker, and he must be Jamaican, and I hope you guys like my Jamaican accent. But anyway, um, he used you for your for a green card, and now Mookie, you know this because you've even said this, and he's even told you this. 
he said, hey man, I don't have to kiss nobody ass. I got me green card. I don't need you no more. Basically, that's what him tell you. Him tell you that. So, once a motherfucker tell me I don't need you, I got what I needed out of you, uh, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. You better hope you're still standing on those two, te those two feet and you got the teeth left in your mouth that you even open to say some shit like that to me. However, if I'm not going to knock you down on your feet, what I'm going to do best for you is I'm going to take your stuff and I'm going to pack it the fuck up and I'm going to put it outside and you're going to live your ass on the streets or live wherever the fuck you got to live at. Live at that bitch's house. Here's my thing, sweetheart. You still got him in your house and you're the one that's allowing all of this BS. He don't love you. He doesn't want you. He's got other women picking him up from your house. He speaks to these other women on the phone in front of you. What makes you ever think that it's going to get any better than what it is now? And it ain't even better. It's worse. He does not respect you at all. Okay? And once a motherfucker does not respect you, they're not going to respect you as long as you allow them to continue on with the foolishness that he is doing. So, you're depressed. I'm getting fucking depressed right now, reading through this and sitting here having to explain to you. You're a grown woman. I'm pretty sure you are a grown woman by now. You should know right from wrong. Yes, we all are vulnerable at times. We all can be deceitful or deceived by other people. We can all be hurt. We all have feelings. And we all have breakups in our lives where it's hurtful and we love them and we're depressed about it. But then there comes a time in your life where you got kicked in the ass like you did. And you wake the fuck up and you don't keep allowing the shit to happen. Like, diva. You still got him in the house. If his black ass don't want to leave, then you know what you do you leave you pack up your kids and you go you get yourself a nice little place to stay and you leave why would i and it's just water it ain't wine i would not put myself through no bullshit like that sitting around somebody that i cared for but he's disrespecting me like that to the epitome of just fucking epitome. he's treating you like pond scum like seriously he's walking all over you he don't even speak to you he don't acknowledge you he don't sleep with you i don't even know how you got pregnant he don't even sleep with you he don't acknowledge you he don't pay your bills he don't buy no food that nigga living there scot-free he got his feet up you know he got his feet his feet up like I'm doing right now. Got my feet up. He got his feet up on your shit. Relaxing. Because you allowing it. Let me tell you something. If you let me take advantage of you. And you give me the world. And you let me go out on dates. Well, I wouldn't even be that type of person. But if you let, if you give it to them, they're going to take it. And you're just letting him take everything. Including your fucking sanity. Okay? And you're smart. I'm sorry, Diva. But I ain't trying to judge you. But you cannot be that fucking stupid and dumb and naive and blind. You need to leave this situation alone. It is not going to get any better. He's not going to wake up tomorrow and be like, you know, man, I'm very thankful for everything you give me. You give me everything and I love you. And now I'm going to be so faithful to you that it's just going to be about me and you. I'm going to do all of this stuff. This is how I'm going to do. Please, that man ain't waking up thinking about that. He's thinking about the next bitch and who else he can use. He got his green card. Now, here's my thing. I would never marry nobody that didn't have a green card. If you ain't from the United States, you better have a citizenship. Because if you ain't, I'm not fucking with you. You ain't about to make me feel no less than a person because you need me for a fucking piece of plastic. Get the fuck out of here, okay? On some real shit right now, after reading all of that, you got a baby with him. I wouldn't even have no baby with him. However, he wouldn't even be in my presence. I would not have him in my house. You are allowing so much shit to go down. You're causing all of this extra shit to yourself. All of this with the depression, you're going to go crazy. And you can't blame nobody but yourself now. Because once you found out about her and he started doing all these changes. And once, basically, once he told you that he didn't need you because he got his plastic, you should have left him the fuck alone then. But no, you stayed around because you probably had high hopes that this relationship was going to work out. And for some reason, he was going to love and obey, okay? His whole true agenda, his whole true motive was to get what he needed out of you. And he got that. And now you are allowing him to get more, okay? Nobody said cut the motherfucker's throat. 
but all you need to do is leave him alone. And if he doesn't want to leave, then what you need to do is leave. And if you're not divorced from him yet, your ass need to go get divorced from him. Don't get served the fucking papers so that you can work on him and don't, and don't hand him in. What sense does that make? Diva, you live in a lie. And when I say you live in a lie, it's because you got this man still living in your house and you really think that he's going to change and you really think that he's going to wake up and be like, you know what, I love Mookie today. This is going to be my mean girl because she, she held me down. She got my car. This is my girl. Please, he got another baby on the way. He already told this bitch that how he feel about you got her and him laughing over there ridiculing and humiliating you and that shit is okay that shit would never rock with me his ass would have been out the door and if on top of that i would have brought his shit to her house here go sell your motherfucking weed and be over there with your soon-to-be baby and your new wife be with her spend every fucking spend every day holiday every day over there but as long as you allow it sister girl he gonna continue. So when you go, the next time you go look in the mirror, look at yourself and realize how foolish you look and how foolish you are allowing this shit to just continue. Do you not have any friends to tell you, hey, girl, you better wake up. What's wrong with you? You need to have a reality check with yourself and get it together because ain't no man worth all that aggravation, okay? Especially when you know that they're cheating on you and when you know that they're using you. You ain't even got to speculate that shit. He told you. He came right out and told you. So there's nothing left to do but somebody leave the household. And open your eyes and stop acting crazy. What the fuck? Let Mookie know how you feel about that situation. Would you allow somebody to use you and then keep living in your household after they told you they don't need you no more because they got their green card and so forth and so forth, but you're going to allow him to fuck and drive, drive off and be with this and that bitch and you sitting there in the corner crying somewhere? You crazy. Anyway, stay diva and divolicious. Leave all your comments below. And as always, I'll see you guys on my next video. And I love you guys. This is for my babies.